Hi, Jeff from Discover Double Bass here. You're about to watch a clip from our masterclass with the great Chris Wood. So I really hope that you enjoy it. Absolutely. No, it's really fascinating to kind of hear you unpack some of the technical aspects. And I mean, seeing as we have the bow here, is, um, is the bow something that you would recommend that everybody gets comfortable with? Was it with your work with Bob Cassinger that you first started using the bow? And it's, uh, I, I think it's a, a huge part of the instrument. It's so expressive. You know, and even if you're not going to become a classical player, like I'm never going to be a classical player. I yeah. love it, yeah. and I sometimes will do my Bach cello suites or whatever and have fun with that. But I'm, you know, I'm never going to become, uh, I'm never yeah. going to be a Gary Carr or something like that. But, um, but, like I've mentioned before, a lot of my influences are from, you know, African field recordings and all kinds of stuff that has inspired me to use the bow in all kinds of ways uh, and preparing the bass in different ways. There's so many ways you can get interesting sounds but you know besides the sort of traditional yeah. kind of like you know you can also of like African inspired stuff like uh, the concept of distortion is an old concept so the, if you know the, the instrument the African balafone it's like looks like a xylophone kind of made out of wood and you have these gourds underneath that help amplify the sound they would they had these spiders that they would put in there and the spiders would make spider webs and would distort the sound Right, because it sounds cool. It's, yeah. it's, it's like an, everyone loves distortion, something about it. So it's incredible what you can do with distortion with a bow. You yeah. know, you can have a clean note, but you can all... So are you, are you loosening off the pressure in the bow hand then? Yeah, it's a real feel thing. It's uh, loosening pressure not only here, but here. So, right, like the, the looser, you, you tend to get more harmonics, right, with less pressure on the, yeah. in the left hand. And then, of course, there's playing more sort of the ponticello or whatever, closer yeah. to the bridge, right? <laughs> you know, it's like you can have a lot of classical players are like, that note's wrong or that's sour, but if you use it musically, it could oh, be a whole amazing. other thing, you know, it could be a way to express yourself. It's this incredible sound world, isn't it, the, uh, the bow? It's amazing. And then, of course, you know, this is uh, like, yeah, the, the acoustic it. theremin, I call it. Right? Yeah. Awesome. When, did, when did you first start um, uh, trying these kind of alternative or extended techniques out? Was there anyone that inspired you that you, you, you know, uh, maybe saw taking an alternative? I don't know, I'm thinking about people like Mark Dresser or... Mark Dresser, you know. Mark Rebo, Fred Frith. Yeah. Here's a good Fred Frith one, Oof. which I got through Mark Rebo. Okay. But, uh, and, and this, this really is kind of the upright version of the spider webs and the gourds that yeah. I was talking about, but... Get nice and close for this. <laughs> like, listen to that. Like, if you heard, um, like, the, uh, the music from Bali, okay, right, the, with the gongs, the Balinese music, their yeah. gongs sound like this. Like, what note is that? I don't know. It's a lot know, of notes, right? It, yeah. So it, a, it brings out all these overtones, and then depending on where you have this. You can get more, uh, more note and less distortion. And rhythm is at the front, you know. It's got to be. I mean, yeah. the rhythm is where the expression comes, and then the note makes it interesting sounding. But um, and then, of course, when you have those on. And then you combine this, and you combine this, you can get... <laughs> I 
<laughs> That's either really ugly or beautiful, depending on where you're coming from. <laughs> yeah. I remember doing this for the first time on a gig. I'm just thinking that, like, if I was if I was back home and I was doing my little hotel jazz gig, <laughs> they see me reaching for the drum kit. Yeah, the you're stick. fired. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you want to learn more from Chris Wood and experience the full masterclass, please go and check out the link below.